Yo, what up gamers? Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to review and summarize the Zeri game where I ended up 1v9ing the game. Starting off, the matchup is Zeri and Sona versus Lulu and Caitlyn. Both me and Sona are harpic carries who can't do much early, while Caitlyn is a lane bully and Lulu can also put out a lot of damage of her own in the early game, meaning the matchup is very unfavorable. So naturally, I'm getting my ass beat hard in this lane. I mean, I'm just straight up getting ass blasted. I'm Brianna and Caitlyn is Chris Brown and I'm just straight up not having a good time at all in this lane right now. You can see we're at least able to drop Lulu to low HP at one point, but Caitlyn is full HP, I am low HP, and Sona has no more mana to keep healing with me with, so we're still in a really bad spot. It's back to the point where Lulu at one point literally just recalls in a brush while Caitlyn continues pushing us under turret 1v2, and we can't possibly do anything to punish it because we're both just too low to get in her range. So the lane continues to be just a similar disaster to compared to what you've just been watching, up until this Caitlyn ult on Tanassus. Doesn't seem very significant at all, does it? But as she enters in the lane again, I suddenly notice, hey, this Caitlyn has no mana whatsoever. What is she gonna do if I just ghost up to her, considering Lulu seems to be in base or something? So she's running, running, and boom, we eventually get the flash. After getting a bunch of her HP down, and this is finally the moment we've been looking for. Finally, we have an opening in this lane to actually go aggressive. Now Lulu Sona just <laughs> ends up getting massively chunked. I have to go in here. And cover her, and I do think that I can turn this around into a favorable fight. Doesn't quite end up happening though. At least Sona does end up taking down the Caitlyn. But as you can see, she then dies to Lulu, and the wave state is just an absolute fucking disaster. So we are back to step one. And as we get back into lane here, you can see that Lulu is just recalling here and leaving Caitlyn in a 1v2 again. And again, it's just not really gonna matter all that much. I walk up here, trying to force a trade against the Caitlyn. Doesn't really go so well, does it? So I can't really decide whether to try and help me or not, <laughs> or just continue killing the ward she was killing. Uh, but we do find this honey fruit here, so we end up taking this, and now we start the Drake. Now we can see Caitlyn decides it's worth leaving lane for this. Position to the back, nice and safe. Have to dash out of here, because we're a bit in trouble. But boom, we get an assist onto Caitlyn. And try and put out whatever damage we can, but right now we don't have ult. And boom, there we go, we finally get ult. Now we can finally start fighting back. Unfortunately, it was a little bit late into the fight. Cassidy walks up and dies. We continue fighting. Manage not to get stunned by the poppy. This fight is taking forever, these guys are so low, hard they're not dying. Here we go, they finally die. Then after that, we finally- we have a triple kill! We- we're getting stumped! So hard! We get one good fight where we just play nice and patient and safe. Well, safe, you know, up until the very end where we were face attacking three people, but, you know. Safe until we needed to stop playing safe. And we got a triple kill! Just like that! We're back in this game! Finally! So we grab our Noon Quiver and our Quick Cloak and back into lane we go. And now just immediately getting a J4 gank. So we play, we do a little bit of the baiting. And now remember, Kaelin has no flash because I already forced that earlier when I ghosted. During that time when she uh, had no mana. So because of that, that seemingly insignificant moment that didn't actually lead to much, she actually does die in that gank since she already had to use E to get out of my range. And boom, we get massively chunked down by the Poppy, but we live. Now we can start life stealing back with the Vamp Scepter. Bully Poppy off of her passive. Pop the Ghost. Gonna try and go aggressive here. We just get away from the wall so she can't stun us. Gonna dash into her. Finish her off. Unfortunately, this Cassidy has, has no mana, but it doesn't matter because apparently he has enough mana. So we still die. But at least my team should be able to easily clean this up. So we have J4 here just um, backing off from the, auto the Cassidy in this one auto attack away from death. Fails to auto-attack him again when he dashes in, and well, that fight turned out to be a complete disaster, didn't it? Just barely. Can I maybe cheese this guy? No, I can't. So all I can do is we just head back bolt lane, and we just run the waves. So we see some action going on mid lane, and we think to ourselves, hey, the enemy team must be pretty distracted here. Let's go for this plating. Cassidy is on his way. That's fine. We can escape from Cassidy and jump through the wall. Oop, there's a poppy here. That's fine. We just angle ourselves in a way where her E won't stun us against the wall. So naturally, we do still obviously get stunned against the wall. Because that's how poppy works. 
The slowed right as Sona manages to stun them, so I don't make any escape whatsoever while they're stunned, and we end up dying. Whoops. So naturally, we just go bot lane and do it again. Walk up, start hitting the wave. Bully the cast it in a little bit, force them away. And yeah, we're just gonna farm the waves again. Now, we could have gone mid to farm, naturally. But why didn't we do that? Well, we can see that we have every one of our team members on top lane. And so that means that after they're done on top lane, you know, somebody's going to be able to rotate to another lane and start farming that. Are they going to be able to rotate towards bot? No, bot lane is way too far away from top lane. The only way they can rotate to a lane where they can farm is if mid lane is free for them. So I have to leave mid, leave mid free for them. And we just farm bot lane instead. Now, nobody actually rotated towards mid. So uh, we actually lose two turrets. But, uh, you know what, if I hadn't defended the bot lane turret, then I still would have lost that one. And I didn't exactly know in advance that none of my team was to defend that. So, it is what it is, we lose the turret, but we go mid, group here, this is where we want to be. So we farm the first mid wave. Then we farm the raptors. Then we farm yet another mid wave. And so, you know, we're just chilling, we're just chilling maximizing our farm and just waiting for an opportunity to actually do something and what do you know we may have found one here we actually just see Kaelin ulting randomly from our own jungle so i guess we're just gonna try and flank her uh that was an unfortunate moment for me to try and dash into her right as she walked away and uh, unfortunately she just manages to somehow pull off an escape there whoops anyways got a kill on lulu melting away at the un unkillable poppies and atroxes they're trying to get away, but I'm not going to let them do that. I'm going to be an annoying fly. Just never letting go. Until eventually, you know, there's the poppy flashy with a W. I couldn't have dashed even if I wanted to. And I'm just dead, just like that. But you know what? At least I got a kill. And it was an okay fight for my team. It wasn't a stomping win, but you know what? Considering how far behind we were, I'll take it. So we're from another wave. I'll get some vision there. And we go to farm another wave. Because you can see right now that my Gragas is mid lane. So as much as I'd like to be mid and gathering farm on mid, we're going to have the protection of, you know, everybody who's surrounding mid. I'm going to go side lane by myself. Because it's the only way I'm going to get farm. Then we're also done with that. We head over here. And boom, I accidentally run into Cassidy. Probably should have taken a safer pathing. This could have been easily avoided. Also fell the dash through the wall. I meant to take a longer... Dash through the wall there. If I'd pulled that off, that would have been pretty sick, but I did not, so I die. And then we revive. Head back into our jungle where the enemy team is. Start working on clearing this pink ward. Good thing I don't even need vision of it. And what do you know? This is exactly the same situation as before, I guess. Boom. Caught exactly in the same place. Unleash my ultimate. J4 traps them. Drag us with the flank. And what do you know? Actually, a team fight win, just a clean team fight win. How does this happen? Well, it seems Cassidy was top lane, but honestly, even if he'd been there, I don't think it would have made too much of a difference. I think their team got caught way too hard there. So while my team does the Drake, you know what? I'm gonna take advantage of this and just get some more farm. My team does not need me to do Drake. That would be overkill. We may as well have somebody farming the spot wave. Also, may as well have somebody headed towards mid. They're not actually headed mid. But we should have had somebody headed mid to grab that free farm. And hopefully, with any luck, we'll be able to get this turret. Which, of course, we do manage to do. But then, we come to our senses and think, Hey, maybe it's not the smartest idea to stay here for another wave. When the enemies are probably headed towards here to try and kill us. So we're just gonna recall. And so, well, 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 well. Our fortunes have certainly turned now, haven't they? Because now we went from getting ass blasted in lane, to now being 9, 5, and 3. Which... You know, I mean, I've died a lot, but I'm pretty strong. CS could be better, but you know what? Killing CS isn't any better, so it doesn't really matter. And so I'm just chilling here, clearing vision with my buddy Sona, who likes me a lot and would definitely never do anything, like maybe die and uh, get caught for no reason and give the enemies a free Baron. And so after she's done doing exactly that, uh, well, I don't know. Let's just try throwing out a bit of poke on Tecasset in here. I don't think he really cared about that. Much, to be honest. Yeah, no, I don't think he cared about that one at all. But on the bright side, we got Mr. Nessus here on the bot lane pushing this turret. 
Gets a free turret. That's 600 gold in his pocket. A little bit of gold in my pocket. And now we can safely farm mid because we can be pretty sure that most of the enemies are going to be headed towards the Nasus. They're probably turning their asses around right about now, but that's too late to catch me. So now I can back for this Infinity Edge, which hopefully could be a pretty big power spike to actually do some damage in this game. And maybe turn this game around even. Now, I have no clue how this happened, but it seems this guy's getting collapsed on. I don't know how he did not see that one coming. It's not like the enemies were just completely surrounding him when we went for that kill and play. So he ends up dying. But that's okay. Because at least I get to farm another mid-wave, as the enemies are still giga-distracted with this, uh, Nasus. And that one's for giving them Baron, bitch. And so naturally I decide here that jumping in 1v2 is the course of action that I should take. Unfortunately, it ends in disaster when it turns out that it's actually not 1v2, but 1v3. But we do almost take down the Cassidy, so it should just be a simple case of, uh... Of, of, uh... Really? So that's about when Gragas the Hero decided that it's all on him to try and save this game. And decided to go into a 1v3. Just like me. Except somehow, this actually turns out a lot better for him than it did for me. It just goes to show the hypocrisy of the League of Legends. So he just ends up wasting a lot of their time. Doesn't actually get any kills, but hey. Now they don't get to get the Nexus turret, I guess. Although we do still have Aatrox pushing the top lane turret, which I'm sure somebody will notice and take care of soon, right? Except I guess not. But that's okay, at least we get more farm now. And now I've decided that I'm just gonna get the QSS. Because I can either use that for, Lulu, for the Lulu Polymorph, or I can use it for the Poppy E. If, uh, again, disaster should strike in that regard. Because Poppy E can definitely be unpredictable sometimes. Could also even just use it for the Cassidy. The Cassidy is actually very, very annoying so far this game. All I do is run and he makes me not run so fast. So it's it's better if I can run fast. So we finish farming the wave and go over to group with the team. Nice landing a nice W on the Caitlyn. Now we walk up the front line as usual. Because that's definitely never turned negative this game so far. But Cassidy goes in, randomly dies for absolutely zero reason. So we try and uh, abuse this. Continuing the chase, burning down this Aatrox. Really wishing I'd pick the champion who does more damage right about now. No clue where Kaelin is. Oh, actually, she's over there. Still. Run out of my ultimate, but... We try and do what we can. Yoinking this Kaelin kill. But that's about it. That's all we're going to be able to pick up. So we're going to go ahead and take the Gromp, because it's very valuable to take away the enemy camps. Also gonna go for the Scuttle Crab, because I just like killing Scuttle Crab, I'd rather it goes to me than my jungler. Then we get the Ocean Drake. And that's a nice objective bounty for us. And so we grab ourselves a QSS, and once again find ourselves farming on the mid lane. Until shortly before Baron comes up, we decide we have seen an opening where we can ambush the enemy top laner. Unfortunately, it seems the enemy team also had the exact same idea. We find ourselves in a 2v2, our top laner goes down, I do what I can. Turns out it's, a uh, three people there. So we've got to flash away, try and DPS. Once again, I really wish I wasn't playing a Mosquito right now. Somehow Lula ends up on the front line, so she gets taken down. Aatrox flashes into me. Fucking pathetic, not even close to killing me, bitch. So we chase down the Caitlyn. Yep. Definitely wishing I wasn't playing a Mosquito, but we take down the Caitlyn. And that's going to be yet another team fight win pulled out of our fucking ass. Could have probably done with getting the Baron, but instead I choose to chase the Poppy. And what I think, you know, still maintain was a very wise decision. And because of that, we don't actually get the Baron. So, you know, oopsie. <laughs> and so as Sona presses E on Nasus, he decides that this is all the edge he needs in order to actually engage onto Cassidy. Forgetting that Cassidy could just, you know, just, you know, dash away. Yeah, that's a thing. But somehow it actually does just end up being a positive thing as they choose to re-engage onto the Nasus. They can't just to actually finish him off. So I, whoopsie, I stepped on the trap there, but we take down the Caitlyn. Hit the Cassidy in there, he... Oh. 
So yeah, they managed to take two inhibs down from that, but I mean, that's not really hugely important. I mean, who really cares about inhibs? They're useless anyway. So anyway, I started blasting onto the Satrox. And with minimal help from my teammates, I was able to skillfully take him down. That being said, uh, apparently my jungler thought it was a smart idea to try and steal the Drake, and apparently my top laner thought it would be a good idea to try and help him. So now we once again find ourselves at a numbers disadvantage. I got the Bloodthirster, but I'll be honest, our chances are looking slim. So we grab the Elixir, and we start to do what we can. We immediately ulti open up with the ultimate and start blasting. Hide away from the Cassidy, making sure that we're not in range of the ultimate. Then we finish off the Lulu. Hold up, hang on, I'm sure there was somebody else here. What? That, what? They, they have two more people alive, where the hell is their team? Are you telling me that they had a chance to end and chose to just recall instead? And send two of their people to die instead of actually doing anyth doing anything useful? Well, apparently that must be what happened because our Nexus is still alive, so we're still in this game. We get to farm this big ass wave so we can finish our build. So as Nasus chases Aatrox into Narnia, uh, they start Baron and Sona gets chunked out. But I take my opportunity to go on this Lulu. Immediate QSS onto her Polymorph so we can keep doing damage. So then Poppy decides to flash Emi into absolutely nothing and then I have this beautiful dodge onto her ultimate. So I can just avoid that, continue putting out damage, then suddenly both top laners show up and pretend like they were being useful this whole time. So Aatrox just walks up and dies. Then we get to start pushing mid. We're under a lot of pressure here to end before the enemy team revives, so naturally we decide to waste a lot of time on chasing this Caitlyn. But once we're done having fun with that, we decide that probably the best course of action is to hit the inhibitor. Before we move on to the Nexus turrets. Hit it with a nice W there, which actually forces her flash when straight 4 goes on her again. And in the end, we manage to hit and kill the Nexus. And what was honestly just not even really that close a game. I mean, the enemies obviously did what they could, but I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, I'm just really too good at League of Legends. And I had this all under control from minute one, baby. When I was getting my ass rammed under the turret, that was all part of the plan. But anyway, let me know if you found this video, well, not exactly helpful, but let me know if you enjoyed it. If you want something actually helpful, make sure to watch my Zeri guide, which I will leave a link to in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, gamers.